Yeah, you're on. <laughs> Am I on? Yep, you're on now. Thank you, James. Could anybody give me a thumbs up to say? Yeah, you're on, on now. Thank I'll give you a thumbs up. Is not. Gonna I'll give you a thumbs up. I'm going to leave, by the way, and I'm going to leave it to Gary, and he'll, he'll annoy the hell out of you because of that. Right. Anyway, am I on? You're on. <laughs> After a year, it's still funny. Mm -hmm. right. I'm now. I'm now, I'm now going to continue to talk until you lot shut up. Right. Thank you very much. So welcome to uh, podcast four, series two. You'll see that this week there's a different host in the chair. Um, so Gary is still with us. He is still here. But this week, Gary, being the lazy sod that he is, has decided that uh, he wants a break. And myself, as the muggins that I am, have decided to stop in, to step in and try and do the professional job that Gary does, which clearly I'm going to be rubbish at. So um, welcome, chaps. Welcome to the pub. And, uh, Does anybody yeah. else think that this is kind of deja vu that what Jamie just said? Because I feel like he okay, said I, that. I it went much better in rehearsal. Yeah. So, so, so just full, full disclosure. Yes. Okay. We have started this once before, and <laughs> being the unprofessional that I was, I forgot to record my audio. So yes. Yeah. This is a bit we got an hour and a half in, and we got to do it all over again. <laughs> you bastard. Yeah. Not the greatest right. of starts. Got right. three minutes before I go to bed. Let's get going. Right. What are we talking about, Jamie? <laughs> we have a we have a we have a full a full topic Sorry. list tonight, and you know <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Because the week that's likely to be the worst to edit is the week that I'm doing the hosting. So tonight, folks, we have the results of the photo competition. Oh. Um, we have narrowed it down to uh, a top. Seven, 90. which will be a short list of top five, but we'll <laughs> share those and talk through those in a minute. Uh, we're also then going to talk about the long-awaited landscape photography of the wear uh, of the wear of the year <laughs> debate, uh, and we've been waiting for Mr. Burns to turn up. This guy's rubbish. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Wait till you see the oh. edit. <laughs> I think you're great, Jamie. Jay, you know you're going to get a lot of heckling from Gary, don't you? I think you're great. Look at him. Look how chuffed Gary is tonight. Look. You're going to be a little kid, aren't you, tonight? Oh, my God. You have no idea. Excellent. Yeah. So we've, Go so we've on, Jay. A, packed, a packed agenda tonight, and then we might talk about something else at the end if we uh, if we feel as though we want to. But, um, yeah, should we crack Can I just on? say, sorry, sorry. We're not talking about global warming, are we? For God's mm. sake. No, we spoke What's about that, that about? last week when you was absent. And that's the reason why I'm absent. Well, we had to do it while you were absent because we know how difficult you'd have been to edit. Absolutely. That Greta Thunderpants wouldn't have stood a chance if you'd have been there. Still in Glasgow eating fried Mars bars. I know what I'd do with fried Mars, fried Mars bars. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. It caused a bit of a split in the comments for sure, yeah. didn't it, really? Yeah, it did, yeah. It did, yes, it did. It certainly did. Mm. So see, it was worth doing this. It was topical, you yeah. see. Not and according it... to some of the comments, though. No, some of them were quite if, strident. But the thing is, if you're a negative person in general, in life, you, I'm leave, positive. A I'm optimistic. you leave a negative comment. If you're a positive person in life, you leave a positive comment. What camp do you fall into, James? What camp? <laughs> Not camp at all. I know I've got nice shirts on, but... <laughs> you have got a very nice shirt on. I found fascinated when James gave us a thumbs down and he's part of the group. Yeah, <laughs> rather odd. That says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. I think we should say, actually, I'm certainly going to say, I'm really happy with this particular podcast group. I'm really happy with everything in general that we talk about. And if you don't like it, that's fair enough and that's your decision. But listen, we're still going to do it because that's who we are. Quite right. And Quite we right don't indeed. care. Yeah. Okay. Quite right. Yeah. Yep. Edit oh, don't that, forget about Jay. the Q and A, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, have you yes. heard him already? Oh, is he going to be a backseat host? Oh, he's a backseat driver. Really? Yeah, he's a backseat back driver. Oh. I've got to take yes. my glasses off. Delete. Thanks for the prompt, guys. So, yeah, the the, uh, the Q and A that went so well. Was it last week? No, it was the week before we did the Q&A, wasn't it? Um, we're going to do it again by popular demand, uh, and we're going to do it in two weeks' time. Is that right, Gary? That's right, yeah. We're going to do that in two weeks' time. So 
yeah, get your uh, your questions ready. Look and uh, to, yeah. as I think Gary said last week, if you do come on this time, we do need you to share your camera and have a question to hand to ask us, which is... Not just join us, just for the fun of it. Well, maybe not just join and want to listen in the background, no. All right. No. That's all right. We'd like a question. So shall we crack on? We've got, um, we've got, as I say, a busy night ahead. So what yeah. should we start with? Um, I think we should start with the Landscape Photography of the Year, actually, because I think okay. anybody that's tuned in to see whether they've been shortlisted can wait a little bit longer and can watch a little bit more. <laughs> so right, um, shall I share the pictures or do you want to just talk about it first? What do you want to do? What, what are you going to share, Joe? Like the winning image? I can share the website page and we can just talk through the winning image picture yeah. or do you just want to talk through the process first? Because I think there was a bit of discussion around the winning image, obviously, and there's some, um, uh, there's some thoughts that, you know, maybe that winning image wasn't quite as good, perhaps. No, it wasn't. I'll, I'll, can I just say a piece? I'll just say something. I think I mean, it's been a few weeks now since the winner and winners have been revealed, and I'm sure I'm not on my own to say I was quite taken aback and gasped at the, the winning image. Um, the fact that it's quite a cliche type of image, but not only that, it's a bit of a honeypot location as well, and I thought... That has been deemed as the best landscape shot of the year 2021. I don't know, it's, it's, it's going to do two things. It's either going to belittle the competition or in a positive way, it's going to open up photographers' options that, yeah, I can actually go to the honeypot location and I can shoot that cliche shots and still be credited. But... For me, that shot is not shown a lot of skill at all. It's been done many, many times before. And to be honest, I felt sorry in a way that other images didn't deserve, well, the other images deserve more credit. I believe the commended ones, including one certain one here, was far better than the winning image and indeed the winning images of each category. So it's quite taken back. So I think it's, it's affected a lot of people's opinion in my, of landscape photography of the year. Um, so, yeah, so do you think the win, do, you, do you think the winning image should be a unique image? I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, do. I, I, I agree. Absolutely. With that. I agree Absolutely. With that. The one, the one that stands out. And it, how does that stand out? I don't know. I think you can have um, like a honeypot location shot that's perhaps highly commended because you may get some really awesome conditions there. But yeah, I do think possibly that the, the winner should be a unique shot like last year's winner. That was very worthy, that was. It was, yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think you can have a honeypot shot that wins, but it has to be unique. Something about it is strikingly unique that makes it stand out. And for me, that one wasn't. And I did notice as well, if you look at a lot of the commended images, a lot of those are from honeypot locations as well. There was the Lone Tree. Well, Lone that black Dan, and white one, Rither Brath there. Yeah, there was, there was Home Fell. There was, uh, uh, was the, the castle in Scotland, in the commended, in the highly oh. commended, in the categories. There was an awful lot of very honeypot locations that made it in this year, which is weird because I haven't seen that in previous years. Apparently a lot of the judges weren't all landscape photographers, am I right? I don't know. I believe that's right, yeah. I noticed there was a, a black and white from Wick and Fen as well yes. this year. Yes, there mm. was. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's interesting you said that, James, that the mm. judges weren't landscape photographers. Um, you know, <laughs> you can see people um, who aren't landscape photographers find images beautiful. You mentioned in honey pot locations and cliche locations. That only applies to landscape photographers doesn't apply to people who enjoy an image. And so maybe we're a little bit tainted uh, in our view of what may, makes a really good landscape image. And, 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 and hats off to, to Charlie Waite and Landscape Photographer of the Year, if that's what they've done. And they've actually brought in uh, non-landscape photographers to judge it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th I, I thought that the, the shot was a, a lovely shot, even though it is, as you said, a honeypot location. Uh, and a cliche location may be in landscape photography circles, but if you were coming to it with not having that view, as in a landscape photographer, you may be thinking it was a beautiful image. So, 
I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, if the judge had seen that shot and thought that location, before, I understand. I mean, at the end of the day, it was, it is it's still a nice shot. It's a beautiful shot, yeah. It is. You know, you've got your circular moment, it, it allows the eye to go into the iron gate in the middle of the image, which is quite an ugly gate, obviously. The fence is closed as well. It's pretty unique it. with the gate, though, because I, I, I went on Google and had a look, and there's not many with that. With that gate on, um, it's normally open or not not visible or cropped out. Yeah. W without taking no, you know, disrespect away from the photographer and the image, because I think we all agree it was a lovely image, lovely colourful image. But the thing is, it, for me anyway, it didn't feel as though it was crafted. You know, if you craft a composition and you work a composition and you you spend time making sure that what you've got is nailed as best as it can to be able to be credible enough to win the landscape photography of the years that to me didn't feel like a crafted image you, you know you, you're in a tunnel of trees that presumably and i've never been there so you know again this is probably you know something that <clears throat> i can't say with confidence because i've not been to the location but it seems as though you go to that area you can plonk your tripod in the middle of that path frame it up nicely so you've got the trees around get the light and everything working for you and the shots there it didn't you don't really have to craft it it just seems to be there if you get to that location in my opinion anyway but as i say that's probably because i've never been there but i felt that a lot of the commended images seemed a lot more crafted and a lot more work gone into them than than, than the winner and that's it about lo honey pot location isn't it the composition's been done for you by previous people mm. i think the winning images have to stand out that unique moment in time mm. but i think that goes back to who's judging it if it's fellow Absolutely, landscape yeah, photographers course, that are yeah. judging it, then then, then they're going to be thinking at that ilk. But, you know, I, I've put images up in the past on Facebook, not particularly good images, and, and, and non-photographers will say it's absolutely awesome because they've never seen it before. And to them, it's amazing. So, you know, if you look at that circle of light and that was one of the only images that the judges saw and they're not landscape mm -hmm. photographers, they're going to think, God, that's absolutely, absolutely wonderful and magical and hobbit-like. So... You know, it depends who's judging, doesn't it? Do you think as well it might be the fact that a lot of people wouldn't put that image in because they think, oh, that's not going to do any good because it's a cliche and they're not going to pick a honeypot cliche shot that th that it did so well because maybe the competition, I'm not saying it was a bad shot, but maybe the competition for that type of shot wasn't there because a lot of people wouldn't even put that in in the first place thinking it wouldn't get anywhere because it's a honeypot location. It was interesting that you said that a lot of the commended were honeypot locations as well you know because yeah. that's what's going to uh, appeal to non landscape photographers you know also the other thing i felt as well about it were there were some really very saturated images if you look through the highly commended images in the categories some of them are really really very strong in terms of saturation which is another thing that i would have thought a lot of people would go that won't do very well if i put that in you know so maybe having a different maybe set you're of judges right, yeah. Maybe they're all thinking the same, like you say, Gary. Yeah. On that one who is thinking, honey pot, saturated, puts it in. Yeah. They pressed her. Yeah. It does worry me a little bit but that everybody takes El Potty as a, a big store um, as to ability. You know, 99.9% .9 of it's going to be potluck. There's thousands, tens of thousands of images, I'm sure, go in. Oh, yeah, and then uh, uh, to whittle those down to a few hundred and then 10 or 20. You know, if you put an image in and maybe it's not done quite as well as you thought it, or don't don't uh, break yourself over it, it's most probably that uh, it was scanned past a little bit quickly. And you know, it's it's the way uh, lands uh, landscape photography competitions are. You pay your money, and it, it is a little bit of a lottery at the end of the day. But don't don't uh, drive yourself nuts. <laughs> if you don't. Funny, we knew someone who's been successful. You could have input. Yes, yes, and, um, and it was a beautiful oh, shot. Yeah. Dave? Yeah, would you like to comment, Dave? Well, it's kind of difficult, isn't it? Because <laughs> if I start slagging off the judges, I'll shoot myself in the foot. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, but I've got skin in the game, so mm -hmm. it, it, I, I can't be um, super objective. I think that if we hold up this year's winner against last year's winner, and the influence that last year's winner had, because if you think back to springtime this year, every second bloody picture on social media was wild garlic. And the year before, mm. wild garlic, what's that? 
Yeah. So it, it sort of spawned its own genre. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's undeniable that, that there is some influence to be generated by these sort of things. Um, as to whether or not I think the judges are right or wrong, you know, come on. Uh, but what I would say is that there are a number of images that I look at and um, I, in a million years, I wouldn't say I should have done better. That's, that's ludicrous. But there are some images that I look at and I sort of think, hmm, I wonder if these might have made the shortlist but not the subsequent commendeds, highly commendeds and all that sort of thing. In particular, some of the honeypot locations, there's a reasonably well-known lone tree in my locality mm. which has popped up in the black and whites. Now, it's a lovely image, don't get me wrong, but... I'm willing to bet there would have been better black and white images that perhaps should have, because if you're going to shoot that tree, it's always at its best when it's isolated and it's at high water, and, and this particular image isn't. Mm. The, um, so the atmosphere today. of the image is lovely, don't get me wrong. It, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is a really good image, but I think it does, to some degree, illustrate what you were saying about honeypots. And, and I actually do think that... If you're going to run a landscape photography competition, to bring people in with little landscape photography experience as judges, it's kind of wrong almost. I mean, you know, think about it. If they said to me, would you judge a portrait competition? I wouldn't know what the hell I was looking at. So, you know, I'd be picking the prettiest looking girl because she's pretty and the photography might be rubbish. What do I know? If um, I were asked to do a burlesque though, I'd be right up there. Competition, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting yes, the take on that, David. Yes. Yeah. Did you say, Gary, that there was the the other competition? Was it the natural natural landscape that they natural had? Natural landscape. Judging... It's all landscape photographers. Yeah, but didn't they have a different judging process where they scored different uh, different values or something depending on it was points. each judge? Based on was points, it points? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was so. something on Twitter where people were posting their <laughs> images, and they also had individual winners, but also. Um, photography winners based on a, a portfolio and they had like a, say round one the, the the scores round two the scores or it was that wasn't called round one and round two but it actually went down the list and showed you the scores from each individual judge they didn't say the judges names obviously but i felt that was that transparency was excellent because you could see who was you know or ha how they were being judged on on, on different things it just made a lot more sense to me although the winner of that was the winner of the best photo of that competition was a very strange photo. Questionable, wasn't it? Yeah. Very questionable, yeah. Which was what? What, what was it? It was um, like a block was of it, ice it, and a yeah a reflection. And a stone. It was an orange stone, and it's just it a graphical, like a moon and the graphic oh, interpretation yeah, yeah. of it. It depicted a mountain and the sun. Just go. I think we should give. Um, I think we should give Stuart McGlennon a shout out as well, um, who obviously kind of watches and has been on the podcast because nice guy as well. He, he, uh, yeah, and and I thought his photo. I mean, I've seen this photo before and I loved it before. Uh, the shelter, he's called it, where he's got the ponies uh, oh, yeah. up against yeah, the yeah. trees in the snow. Yeah, that I thought that was a, that was a, a cracking image. That was. That'd have been that one of my so top awesome. ones, to be honest. Because I thought it was amazing. Well, it's like yeah. what we're saying. It's, yeah. it's, it was the in the commender, wasn't it? Mm. So, I think. I, I think the problem. The problem with El Potty though is, is, is that, you know, going the years gone by, it's obviously been landscape photographers and possibly well-known landscape photographers that have done the judging, and uh, it seemed to be. I'm not going to say well-known mm -hmm. landscape photographers that got commended and and did well, but that seemed to be more of the biased. Uh, and this year they've gone to the bias of maybe having people who are not landscape photographers and we're seeing a whole different slant on it, maybe go 50-50. I mean, I know what you were saying, David, about, um, you know, judging a portrait um, and you wouldn't know what you were talking about, but maybe if we just go into the raw aspect of what landscape photography is all about, which is capturing the image and capturing the moment, maybe just putting it out there and play devil's advocate, maybe the best people to, to judge that might be non-landscape photographers. Mm. <laughs> yes, mm. but then but then almost allow people to know it's non-landscape photographers so you're not p 
put off by putting in the honeypot locations. I mean, yeah. I'm just looking on the black and white here, and you've got the Lone Tree at Klimpadan. You've got Homefell. Where's that? You've got, you know, <laughs> Wales. <laughs> yeah, you've got the Church in the Sea, which was a very excellent, uh, very excellent one. You've got the Fairy Pools on the Isle of Skye. You've got the Rither Brathe. You've got so many, and that's just in the black and white. Wickham Fen. You've got quite a lot of really well-known sort of, you could argue, honeypot locations in that one category. And I wonder if you'd have had purely landscape photographers judging it, whether a lot of those would have got through because they would have gone on. Oh, I've seen that Unlikely. Two times. So Unlikely. Is, is it? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's what, what evokes emotion in the, in, in the judge. Mm. And that's what I'm saying is, is if you've got people that are not have not seen these images over and over again because they're not landscape photographers you're getting some raw emotion uh, that's going to come out that's going to get them to choose something they're not going to they're not interested in whether or not it's five by four or technically sharp front to back so uh, that that rocks with me to be honest is is it's the art that comes out rather than possibly uh, the emotion but i mean i'm contradicting myself because i've always said that i'm not that keen on shooting honeypot locations but that's purely because i've done them loads before uh, but you know, if you shoot a honeypot location, as Gary Goff said, the honeypot location is a honeypot location for a reason, mm. and it's because nine times out of ten you'll get a lovely shot. Yeah, it's just, it's just doing nothing for the art, in my opinion. <laughs> I understand that. I do. We all, we all have you got? Sorry, Jay, go on. No, I was going to say we all entered. Did we all enter? This no, year? no, I didn't. You didn't. Enter. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. we all did, didn't. Oh, no. well, I, no. I don't remember whether I did or didn't. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No. Well, if we did, then I would have done a lot better. If, if, if we did, because of what we're discussing, is it putting us off entering next year, or are you still yeah. going to enter again? Actually, encouraging me fear. to enter. It, it's encouraging me to enter. Yeah, because the last mm. time I entered was about six, seven years ago. And I saw the way the judging was going, and I thought, you know what? No, because I'm not, I'm not in that clique. clique. So, and, uh, and obviously, I'm not what they're looking for, so I didn't bother, but... The fact that they're uh, 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 going down more of an eclectic viewpoint from a judging point of view, because I hope it's 50-50. I hope there's 50% landscape photographers and 50% uh, non-landscape photographers on there. I, ju I just think that we're more interest, but the standard mm. will be lower. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. what's happened this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you look at the commendables, I think there's some absolutely gorgeous shots. So do I. Mm. That are technically yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, would be my choice as a landscape photographer. So I'm not. I, I'm not necessarily saying I would have chosen the winning e entry have you, uh, are, as a landscape have you photographer. Got, are you guys actually got El Potty up on your computer yeah. now? Yes. So if you no, go to um, uh, landscapes at night, uh, mm. th the winner of that category. It's just a comet going over the. Uh, is it Neo Wise going over the uh, the lighthouse? Lighthouse. Yeah. See that for yeah. me, I just think that is uh, an yeah. incredible shot. That is. I mean, um, what was he titled? Comet in a lifetime. Once, once in a lifetime. Yeah, once in a lifetime. You see, to me, you know, that should be. Well, it, I mean, it, it won that category, but for me, obviously, that is a once in a lifetime. That is a such a unique shot, you know, to capture that. Um, yeah, I, f I think that's a cracker. I really do. It's beautiful. Do you think it's better than the one with the same comet over Stonehenge? I do. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, I saw the one over Stonehenge first of all. Yeah, that's it. That's it, James. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw the one over Stonehenge, and I thought that is really nice. And then the the one over the lighthouse. Not too sure what lighthouse that is. Um, that's um, near you, Penmon, isn't it? Is that Penmon? All right, I did wonder actually, but wasn't too sure. But um, yeah, I preferred that one over Penmon than over Stonehenge. But I, I have a bit of. I mean, it is a once in a lifetime shot because you've got the comet in it, and it is a very well taken shot. But should the comet make the, you, you know, if you take the comet out of that shot, would it, would it be an award winning shot? Yeah, but no. then it wouldn't be called once in a lifetime, would it? Without it just be no, like but called, then it could be, it could be called, called once Saturday. A week. No, but what I'm saying is, is that <laughs> it's it's the the happening that that comet's there. 
Yeah. That's made that shot not necessarily but anything. isn't that's what photography is about though you know yeah, we know you yeah, go to the yeah, woodland possibly. and you get like the I real think, I think heavy to be mist fair, it, it comes back to what i was saying last week about you know you hone your skills and then when something mm. presents itself yeah you're equipped to make the best of it this particular image for me um i i i think it's rather fabulous and what i particularly like about it is the stark reflections in the foreground in the water See, that's why I preferred it over the Stonehenge one Stonehenge. day because yeah, there was more, more going on. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, the one over Stonehenge was, was beautiful. You know, if I would have taken that, I'd have been chuffed to bits. But I just think this one has got the edge. Although my portfolio images of the same subject are, of course, far superior. Of course, of course. we all know that, Dave. We know that, David. <laughs> See, I, I prefer the Stonehenge because it's more emotional. With the Stonehenge, it shows an era, time gone by. And the comet as well is time moving. And a big pile past. of rocks. It's because James likes to get his kit off and run round it at midsummer. I, I think the Stonehenge no, ones. To, to, James, to be fair with the Stonehenge ones, the guy needs to work harder on his separation in those rocks. Yeah. What do you think of seven seagulls on top of a fish and chip shop then? I can't lie. It's, a, it's, it's very difficult because that was the young landscape photographer mm. so you know i don't mm. want to be kind of critical but i'm just gonna say no, didn't, just do any, didn't do anything for me that photo did you, at, did you look at did you look did you look at did you look at the other other that's, ones that's that were urban. commended in in that category mm. in the junior category i thought oh i thought there were some i thought there were some excellent ones yeah i, thought I think i think i think yeah. that's what's making making total sense to what james was saying is these are not but possibly not the majority of the judges were landscape photographers. I do I, I do like it, but it's not landscape. It's some parts. No, no, it's a great shot. Mm. Yeah, but it's not. Equally for me though, the urban one, the urban shots. There, I quite like that colourful. Yeah. We've all done. We've all done that. I've done that shot before. That that Victoria, the one with the bus in, and and the and the silhouette of the man. It's just but, probably. Piccadilly Gary, if you want to lazy, you should have entered in the past. You never know. No, but what I'm saying is, is it then? I wonder whether someone with experience of that type of photography judged those because you could argue that the one with all the one that won is is it's more about the art on the wall than it is about the the, the skill of the photographer. Okay, he's got the guy walking at that point, but it's more about the art on the wall for me. The wall. It's not catching. That's not catching the decisive moment. That's just yeah. taking a photo of a wall, and someone happens to be there. Sorry, what what photo are you talking about? The Dale? urban winner. The urban one. Oh, urban. Right, hang on. That. Oh, oh, hang on. And I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad shot because by no means is it a bad shot. It's a good shot, but for me, it's always that's just. You're right. That's all it's, about the, the art. Is, is the mirror on the wall? Yeah, it's it? not. It's not the photographer. The photographer catching a decisive moment there. That's just the art on the walls. Nice, and a lot of the urban ones are like that. They're, they're I must of... admit, I, completely contrary to that, by a country mile, my favourite in the urban section is the one that is a Lowry painting brought to life. Yes. Uh, that street um, scene in the snow. Like Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, that is just jaw-dropping. I, I always look at this sort of thing and think, if that was in a frame on my wall, would would I ever get tired of it? Would it, you know, would it stay on my wall? That That one, I think, is brilliant absolutely mm. brilliant it's so rich in everything technically it's a masterpiece i love that and i think it's far superior to the winner i don't know where you're looking Urban. it's it's an image of, in life. the snow it's it's uh edinburgh in snow yeah it's a great shot and it just looks like a lowry painting the, the oh, way that. the people in it look like oh, stick the... people i like that Oh, you're so technically minded, aren't you? Waving your phone at the camera. <laughs> Jamie's going to have a nightmare oh, editing this. That one. Oh, I see this yeah, deliberate. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. the one. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful, is that? Yeah. I just think that's a masterpiece. It's it's so rich in content and technically very, very well done. For me, that one's excellent. For me, the guy on the bike with the panning is excellent because it's it's got so much movement in it and so much action in it but then they, they obviously they didn't they didn't come near winning which is i find it's a lot 
It must be like deja vu. This I've, I've listened to people talking about El Potty now for the last five years. Every th- every every year, everybody's yeah. saying the same thing. Mm. And, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult for <laughs> for Charlie to uh, oh, yeah. uh, to get it right, isn't it? Um, well, let's be honest. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna find it that we'll probably have people saying, "What the hell are they picked?" When we talk about mm. our little competition mm. coming up. Absolutely, so it is yeah, difficult. Of absolutely. Okay. Doesn't doesn't Charlie do a a, a talk through? of the winning images afterwards where he explains some of the reasons why. Yeah, I think does. it's a bit hit and miss. I, I get the distinct impression that, you know, there may be a video, there may not, yeah. uh, and they may pick some, they may not. And when you look back mm. at, over that particular channel, it's as about sporadic as mine is at the moment. I think I, I also find it fascinating that people find the need to spend, I don't know how much it is, to send stuff in. For help. I've been, I'm playing devil's advocate now. <laughs> uh, for uh, to send um, images into El Potty, pay the forty or fifty quid to get justification on their images, because it really is. It's 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 a commercial enterprise at the end of the day, and it was something yeah. that Charlie dreamed up many years ago. Landscape photographer of the year, and I, I find it rather odd that most awards are given on the back of effort without you having to pay for it. So that's maybe why I don't send my images in to El Potty because I'm actually paying somebody uh, uh, um, to tell me whether or not my image is any good and then it's potluck. So, so I should have hung on to my 1750 quid. I think. <laughs> 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 well, you see, the thing is, is that your image uh, would, I, I, it would have been maybe my winner. Because I, if I was a non-landscape photographer, it was beautiful. And as a landscape photographer, it was also beautiful. So. Yeah, I, I just wanted a free book. I ended up spending five times as much as if I bloody <laughs> bought it. Yeah, yeah. Right, I've got to try and sort this fire out, but all the wood is against the door. When I opened it last time, it was all going to fall out. So, Oh, can so we zoom in and watch you struggle? No, with and, then yeah. and then I'm going to have a down. wee after that. Just go before on. you go, have you... Have you, yeah. have you got a new pair of pajamas, mate? No, I've had these for about two years. Where my other pajamas, they're about five years old. Uh, it's because it's, it's me, me, me mum noticed. You see, and I talked to her last night. She says, "Is Darren got a new pair of pajamas?" Yeah, I, says, no, I don't know, mum, but I'll ask her to. Yeah, ask her to unless you want your wife. This um, the the, the older the pajamas get, the better they are. So, I don't know, these have probably been my favourites in another kind of five years, but they've got a long way to go yet to beat the others. It's funny you should so. say that, because I find the older my pyjamas get, the tighter they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure what's going on there. Right, so, as a nice little introduction section, that, from um, the next piece we're going to talk about, because this is all about you guys and your fantastic pictures that you've put into the photo competition to win this awesome book by Gavin Hardcastle, Chasing All. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna share um, the top images that we've selected in terms of our shortlist. Um, and then what we're gonna do live on air, uh, we're gonna then go away and we're gonna choose the winner. But of course for you, it's gonna be seamless. Um, and we will then tell you after that um, who's won this book. But um, we'll start with the first image, which is um, we've selected to discuss anyway, which is Andy Bones' image. So here's this image. Ooh. So yeah, so this is Andy's image. So who wants to, who wants to talk about this first? I'll give a go if you want, because it's, on, it's, it's one that I think was on my shortlist. Um, I was intrigued by this image. Um, I thought it's obviously got some really nice atmosphere to it with with the sort of the mist that's hanging over this lake, but and, and I really like the colour palette as well. Sort of the cool tones of this of this shot is is beautiful. But that tree in the middle that's silhouetted, it's I don't know. It's just it just stands out amongst the trees in the background. Obviously, he's using the light fantastically in this shot because you've got the the pine trees in the back that are catching that light, and then it's illuminating the mist on on the lake. But that sort of dead silhouetted tree in the middle just leading to the angle i just thought was it just gave that image a little bit of an edge it gave it a little bit of a subject that was a bit different to you know a moody image of misty trees on a lake uh, and i just thought that was that composition was was just really interesting 
Um, and I quite like the fact that you've got those two little stumps underneath that tree that are pointing in the opposite direction. Um, so you've got an opposite angle going on there. And I just thought it, it was just a really interesting image to look at um, uh, rather than, a, you know, a technically perfect image, which I'm not saying it isn't, but I just thought it had a lot of mood interest uh, and particularly that tree I just thought was absolutely fascinating. And you've got the little bit of, you know, gold or tunnel colours at the top of the tree popping out as well, which just adds a bit of colour to the scene. So yeah, I just thought it was excellent, and it's a fantastic image. Mm. I I love this image as well, uh, for a lot of the reasons that you've just said, but um, I love the fact that it draws you into the image. There's a juxtaposition between the rightward facing um, um, silhouetted tree and those little left uh, stumps in the, in, in, in the water but you know this is an image where we were talking about El Potty is that as a non-landscape photographer yeah you can talk about technicals but as a non-landscape photographer it draws me into the image so I look on the left hand side and look at the the reeds or, or the grasses in the water on the left hand side the cool image and then the actual reflection of the tree draws me into the tree itself and then you mm -hmm. go into the background and you've got again I would use the term <laughs> juxtaposition you've got all the greens and then he's got a little bit of uh, the gold in the background and I just think um, <laughs> I don't want to be critical because I'm not but I'd have possibly cropped it a tiny bit but other than that this is a near perfect image for me I just I, it's just it just really rocks my boat I just love it I, I thought when I, when, when I first looked at the image I thought oh it's quite messy is that isn't it it's not really it doesn't really fit the it's not really balanced but then, if you allow yourself time, it really mm -hmm. does draw your eye in. There's so much going on in this yeah. image. Mm. Look at the backlighting on the ferns. Mm. And then you've got, as you say, Paul, the juxtaposition of the dead tree against the live foliage. <laughs> and then you've got... I mean, yeah, you're right about the crop because the reflection of that front tree continues there's no edging there's no border around there is there? yeah so yeah. i'd perhaps clone i perhaps clone so at the very bottom so there is some spacing around mm. it but then it wouldn't fit in with the true reflection would it okay so let's move on to the next one so the next That's one water. is um in these are in alphabetical order by the way so we're not selecting these in any order apart from alphabetical to make it fair so the next one that's made the short list is uh is alan coles's image oh let me i well i must admit this shot for me this is the one that jumped out at me straight away when i when i um when, when i looked at the gallery i just think this is awesome it just reminds me of you know kind of almost like the 18th century Jack the Ripper, Whitehall, London, you know, the oil field, uh, lanterns going through the, the streets, nitty, oh, but it's just, I, I love it, Gr a grungy image. Well, I don't know where this was taken, um, but yeah, for me, this is, this has got everything for me, a stunning black and white image. I think it's Alan's back passage. <laughs> <laughs> As, as can, can you can you confirm that, Alan? Is that your back passage that we're looking at there? No, but that is that's uh, got, it. Must yeah. be in some sort of cathedral. Was it a cathedral that was taken in? Perhaps he was on a a tour or something. Uh, um, oh, yeah, a cathedral by night or something like that. Um, brilliant I've got, image. I've got to say that the, the the editing on this is superb, isn't it? Yeah, it is it, it mm. absolutely 100% HDR, fits. isn't it? Yeah, but it totally fits the image, definitely. Yeah, you sometimes Ritter. get it where mm. that editing just doesn't look right. If you'd have put that on mm. something else, it just wouldn't look right. But on this, it totally fits the image, it's, it's yeah. really good. It's really yeah. good. Love it. Well, it, it was my favorite as well, um, because a it's not a landscape image, uh, and b. Uh, there's nothing I don't like about it. I just think it's amazing, and I'm very jealous because if I could have got a shot like that, it'd be on my wall. So well done, yeah. Alan. I think it's absolutely. It's one of those that you could put on your wall. And you could spend an hour and a half, two hours, ten years. I wonder who it is. Mm. Isn't it Alan? It's not Alan, is it? <laughs> is that Alan next year? <laughs> that's that's too young for Alan. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Alan. 
I love Alan anyway. I think his, his work's brilliant, but that is just something else. Just love it's it. just a bit too Welsh for me. <laughs> There's no such thing. Oh, sorry. Says the Welshman <laughs> from Scotland. No, it's got a clockwork orange feel about it. It's got a bowler it hat, for Christ's sake. A, that's the no. only clock That's, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> I think bowl out to the clock of a orange. He's probably got a cod piece on as well, but you can't yeah. see that. And a baseball bat in his back pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic image, Alan. Uh, right. Really, really good. So let's go on to the next one. So the next one is Pete Kennington. I must admit, this was close to my selection as well. I really yeah. like this one. It was yeah. my third one. I like this. Almost well, my I like second. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. Where well, was what? that taken? Is that Scotland? Where is it? I can Is it here? No? Well, I picked this one. Um, I know someone else picked this one as well. But I just find it fascinating. I, I can't... I just I look through this image so many times and I, every time I find something else I love the ice I love the lead in I love the fact that it leads you off almost off to the left hand side and then brings you back round to the mountain range I just I just love it it's it's incredibly sharp as well which I love front to back the only thing I'm, I'm going to be like really marginally critical about it and I did pick it I just don't. I, I'm not a massive fan of that type of sky, that sort of very faded blue sky. But it's a brilliant image, and it came. This one came in really early, if mm -hmm. you remember. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw that, I went, "Oh my god, I absolutely love it!" And I was like, "Nothing's going to beat that." And but there were so many other brilliant ones that came in as well. But for me, brilliant image. Yeah, beautiful image. Totally yeah. agree. I like this. Technically image awesome. Yeah, it's just looking a bit light for me. Bit of glowing light in the foreground. Really I think he's he, he's it's edited it. Um, he's edited it though um, sympathetically, anti. So it's, I think it's, it's flat, slight, it? slightly, it's slightly flat. desaturating and emphasising mm. texture rather than colour, which I thought is beautiful. Mm. Do you think it's flat, James? I wouldn't yeah, have said that was flat. It's, it's just, no. You mean the the temperature? Yeah, a little bit of light in the foreground. Mm. Perhaps. I'm I'm just thinking, but I'm just talking about what would improve it. I do, I do like it. A vignette, maybe, personally. Mm. Certainly got a lot of depth to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Beautiful depth, yeah. It's got, you know, a little p patch of grass in yeah. the foreground that sort of, you know, really leads you all the way up to those mountains in the background. I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by that little bit of rock in the midground. That's what gets me every time I look at this. Mm. I always go back to that. I'm sort of picking over it. I'm, I, I'm just sort of... I think that I stops the eye moving onto the mountains. See, I really like it. I'm, I, I just... Like yeah, I, I know what you mean, Gary. Yeah. I, the, 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 the image draws me in, and then I look at the textures of that, um, yeah. of those rocks, and I think if there was a lot of light on it, it would change the dynamics of those. And yeah. then after I spent five minutes looking at the rocks, I then go into the background. So it's another, it's a, a, a third course of a meal, if you like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you, and you, that you've got the background as well. Yeah, mm. brilliant. Yep. Yeah, well done, Pete. Lovely shot. Well done, Pete. Right, so next on our shortlist is, we don't know his last name, because it's just come up unless Dave knows his last name, um, but on the website it is Sean. Sure. That's it, that's the image, move so on. This is Sean's image. Yeah, it's lovely, that, isn't it? Yeah, this was one of my choices as well, actually. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Oh, so just three. to clarify, both of your choices have got in and none of mine. OK, I can see how this is going. <laughs> Which did you choose, Dave? Which did you choose? You chose the last one, Dave, to be fair. Oh, which one? The Pete Kennington one. We're, we're coming to well, your other choice. Well, of course, it's got choice. mountains, isn't it? What do you expect? <laughs> we're coming to your other choice. That's a mountain. Windy it, well, we are, we are now, anyway. We were, Dave, <laughs> but... This is fun. <laughs> so, Sean, 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 James, go on and talk about Sean's image. Well, there's nothing much to talk about, is there? I mean, look, just look at it. I think it's really well, nicely balanced. Again, juxtaposition, popular word tonight, but you've got your live, you've got your dead. Lovely contrast. Out of the shapes, fill the frame. It's, and you've got, obviously, got the snow as well, just adding atmosphere to that. And it's nicely cut in with the fell line. Not over intersecting the tree as well. Yeah, it's a lovely. It's pretty nice perfect, palette. isn't it? Pretty perfect. By far the best. Yeah. 
you know, if you look if you look in the background, he's not uh, overlaid the tree um, and cut off the background, has he? He's got Nicely framed. the tree. Yeah, mm. absolutely, beautifully framed. Motive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so everything everything tack sharp. Uh, the, the, the the subject, and then the softness of the uh, of the snow. It's beautiful. It's a fantastic subject, isn't it? If I was mm. going to be ultra critical, though, uh, just to be me, possibly a little bit more breathing room on the left hand side. Just yeah, so man. that tree's got a slight bit more breathing room on that left hand side. Not a lot, but it just see, to me that seems really close to the edge, but it doesn't detract from the image at all. It's very awkward, isn't it? Because when we look at a photo, like for me, I kind of agree, Jay, but I'm thinking more at the bottom. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more mm -hmm. breathing space at the bottom of this image. But you don't know what the photographer's up against. See, on the no, left-hand side, no. there might have been another tree that was very close, or at the bottom, there might have been something in the background that, that wasn't particularly nice. It's a great photo. I think, for me, if it was just had a little bit more breathing space, left and right and bottom, 100%, you know, a, a, a cracking image. But as it stands at the moment, I still love it. I really do. As, as James said, you know, the, the alive part of the tree, the dead part of the tree, yeah. Fantastic, and the tree tree almost looks all, uh, well. It's almost three D, isn't it? With the, yeah, uh, yeah, the, colors, with the yeah. green Touch. and the darks, and you know, yeah. uh, again, juxtaposition, <laughs> the dead and the alive as well. Yeah. It's just amazing. Mm. Well done, cool. Well, well done, well done man. Sean. So the next one is Tomaz. Tomaz, hope that's how you say your name. Um, and we've can got I, another tree. Can I, can I start with this? Go on. Well, when I first looked at the gallery, uh, it was Alan Cole's photo that really jumped out at me because uh, I thought it was it was very contrasting. It really caught my eye. It really stood out. And I have to say, this image didn't actually catch my eye at all when I was kind of scrolling through. It wasn't until that I kind of clicked on it and looked at it did I absolutely fall in love with this image. It's almost like the complete opposite to <clears throat> to Alan's obviously very gritty uh, and punchy image. This is just so soft. And when you kind of enlarge this and look at it on the big screen and you start looking through the mist and the shape of all the trees at the back uh, and the very kind of soft colours in this. Um, I know that I kind of say this every week with my printing head on, but yeah, this would... Uh, uh, this If I took this image this would be on my wall f for sure i think this is an absolutely perfect image for me well, i picked this one as well uh, of my two and i i just love i for me it's composed i don't think you i would do anything different with the composition i love the fact the tree is in the middle i love the layers i love the mist i love the atmosphere i love the color palette i love I love everything about this shot, and, I love and, it. and weirdly for me, it did jump out straight away. Another one that jumped out straight away, and I went, "Oh my god!" I, you know, when that one came in, I just thought I really like that one as well, and I just love the layering. You've got sort of like three distinct layers going back. The tree's the main subject, but you've got those three, and I just think that I, well, I just love everything about it. Mm. Yeah, I do like the color palette. You're right. This is J W M Turner, isn't it? it really is. Mm. really is yeah it's beautiful must admit when I first saw it I my first instinct if I was taking it would be a square crop that I don't know why but yeah, me to too. me that that jumps mm. out as a square but it works absolutely in the crop that he's chosen oh I do I love the crop yeah, me too. I, yeah, I think I think it would be better if he didn't crop out the top half that background tree isn't it amazing mm. isn't it amazing how we all think different because I'd yeah. have gone uh, not, uh, maybe not square crop, but I'd have brought the top and the bottom down a bit. But yeah, sort of more four by three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I would have, I would have got rid of that back, that top right tree, and crop mm. it down a little bit so your crops just below the background middle tree. You know, it's just showing itself yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. easy for us to say that. After yeah, that. absolutely. I just, yeah, I just yeah. think his his colour palette's amazing. Isn't it? So yeah, I love definitely. J W M Turner. You know, I think painter, if this is amazing, if this was printed large. And you was kind of standing next to this photo. I always think, like you know, if you, if you're not necessarily just like 
looking at this photo purposely. Like you just say, you was it was it was in somebody's house, and you were just waiting for them, and you just glanced at that photo. I think you could get lost in it. You could start yeah, just yeah. kind of looking through this photo. You know all the all the little bits that is in the mist, and as we've already said, you know like the colours in this. Um, yeah, I could look at this photo for, for ages. Beautiful. You missed the morning yeah. light and the colour. The, the other thing as well for me, I don't know whether it's a happy coincidence, but he's got the mist is a lot brighter in the background to the tree. So you've got quite a dark top, quite a dark bottom, a very bright middle, which really makes that tree stand out against it. And I don't know whether that's his processing or whether he's just been lucky. Looks like the edit. Really Looks like the edit, well. to be honest. But yeah. the edit, the, 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 I've always said the uh, the, the um, cleverness is in, in the edit, isn't it? Mm. It's just, yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, fantastic shot, that Thomas. Yeah. Definitely. Well done, ten Thomas. Out, ten out of ten, yeah. Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Well done, well done or Thomas. So, so next on our shortlist is Kevin Barnes Seascape. So, who wants to talk about this one then, Dave? Dave. Well, Okay. 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 I love the palette. I I don't know why. I just I just think that the the green tones in the sea work really well for me. I love the technical aspects of it. I think the shutter speed is perfect. And for me, an image that has such depth in it. So you've got a really close foreground running all the way out to infinity. Always floats my boat. And I kind of, th you know, I can just imagine myself sitting on that rock looking at this scene. And that always makes a good photo for me. And kind of like what you boys have said about, you know, Thomas, for example, and Alan Coles's images, quite rightly. I mean, you know, the sort of image you could just sit and stare at. Um, this is what I would sit and stare at. I love it. I, I like that the composition has all of the rocks leading you towards the vanishing point. And it's very easy to get a composition of this nature wrong where you might be three feet to the left and everything's pointing off the wrong way. Quite agree. But he's got That's it just it. right. And finally, technically, it's, it's a really, really good quality image. I, I've been flattered by being able to see these at full res because I had to put them on the website at a, at a size that would allow them not to take three weeks to load. Um, but just technically, you know, his camera work is is superb. And, and, you know, it's a competition and you have to take that into account. You'd have the best composition and subject, you know, a cracking subject. But if you've made a bit of a Horlix of capturing it, then in terms of it being a competition, that has to come into any sort of final decision. And this, uh, the the... Uh, the exposure, the processing, everything for me is flawless. It's a beautiful shot. Absolutely beautiful shot. It is. It, it feels like somewhere you'd take, Dave, as well, doesn't it? It feels like uh, a North Wales coastline. Oh, bit. there's a huge bias. I make no, I make no bones about <laughs> no, that. No, 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 I'm just saying it, 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 it feels like that sort of place. Yeah, it does, yeah. very much so. Yeah. yeah, I love it as well. I think it's a, it's a great shot. Like I say, the colours are excellent. I may, if it were me, I may have just cropped out that middle right rock that's just out of the frame, slightly out of the frame. But other than that, mm. where? it's fantastic. Where? Which one? That's a nitpicking, isn't it? One of the three. Where? Or... That's a nitpicking. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just being a bit picky. But I don't think anything, yeah. every, everything directs yeah. the eye into them. And I even mean, the clouds, you know, this it... is an example where the clouds work for me. Because again, the mm. cloud formations, and again, at circular diagonal. Uh, diagonal. I, I think he's mm -hmm. made a magnificent job of that sky replacement. Can't argue with him. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely, yeah. laughs> Thumbs up for Lumina. <laughs> yeah, great. Good stuff. Well done, Kevin. Cracking shot. Right, so the final of our shortlist uh, is Simon Ferringdon. Ferring, Ferringdon. Sorry, Simon. So. Look at that. This is very minimalistic, so this must be one that we're going to get James to talk about. What's you know what's what's to talk about? I think graphically it's a lovely image. It, I think it's just a nice, calm and sweeping shape at the bottom part of the frame, and you've got a bit of mysteriousness in the faint outline silhouette of the figure. It's simple art. There's no distractions. It just appealed to me, and for me, it stood out. Uh, amongst the rest, which um, 
yeah, that's that's basically it. There's not much more to talk about. Simple for me. You know, I don't think it win any awards, but it just stood out for me. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I must admit, I agree with, with James, actually, that, you know, when I looked at this image, um, it wasn't necessarily a, an image that, that jumped out at me, but it is one of them images that the more you look at it, um, mm. it just really, it really is quite a pleasing image. Yeah. You know, there's Tranquil, not a calm. lot. There's not, yeah. There's not a lot to this image, but it's just a, it's just a really nice one, all the same. But it's a, it's a bold move entering it, in, mm. into something like this. So you've got to take your hat off to him. But I actually agree with you, boys. I think that you know, in the right context and location, mm. I would quite happily hang this on a wall. Yeah, yeah, mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, simple but effective. Yeah. I, I do think we should just, you know, because we've got a short list together, but I do think that there are one or two other people that came very, very close. And I think something that we haven't mentioned, the overall standard. I mean, we've got one hell of a high quality audience to this crappy show. Well done, guys. <laughs> some amazing, amazing. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. 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 Some, some really, really good quality. It's, it's been tough. Um, there's been some debate on our private chat channel. <laughs> And some other people came <laughs> quite close. Uh, one that I want to mention in particular, I'm sure you've all got so, but I want to mention Nikki Folks's. Yes, I love that. The light on that tree yeah. in Nikki's, and uh, hopefully, uh, Jamie, you'll just quickly pop a quick shot of it. Uh, we can just download it off the website. But Nikki's shot was absolutely brilliant, and there's a very specific reason why I haven't picked it. So, Nikki, drop me a line and I'll share that with you. I'm not going to make it public. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else want to call out any yeah, recommendations? I've, I've got a, a few, actually. Don Hartz was excellent. Just a really different, really just, I couldn't quite work out what it was, but I thought that was excellent. Uh, I really liked Terry Bromley's street scene. I very nearly picked that. I thought that was really good. Um, yeah, I was w with you on that. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was just a little bit too overdone for me. Just that, a little bit. Yeah. And that's the only reason. If that was just a little bit more subtle, like Alan Coe's subtle, I'd yeah. have picked that as one of my top. That, that's exactly how I felt. I just It looks fantastic, but it's just slightly over-processed. Only slightly, but slightly over-processed. Um, but there were just so many. Diane Voses I really liked. I thought that mm. was a great shot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, worth saying at this point that all of the images will be on the website by the time this goes out. So, yeah. you know, if you're listening to it on the podcast, what, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Please take the time to visit the website. It's a visual look, show. Th there's there's not one, really, that, that you go, oh, that's not... That's not worth... Yeah. Being, no, why did you send that in? Yeah. Yeah. They're all brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. could literally yeah. sit here and mention... Yeah. All yeah, we could do. We could go possible. through every one. Yeah. I, yeah, I was very close to picking um, Rafe Timbergeek's bear shot. Yeah, that I stood I out for me. Anyway. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, now yeah. we've got the difficult t uh, decision to make of choosing a winner. So, oh, are, are gonna... you not doing that on our behalf? No, no, we're going to do okay. it collectively. You have to play a part. I, even though I'm hosting, I'm not choosing. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we're going to go into a little huddle uh, and we're going to score the, uh, the, the, the short list and come up with an overall winner. And we're going to come back to you in a few seconds time. Right, so after much debate arguments and dave has now got a broken leg <laughs> uh we are at a point we've reached a decision in reverse order there we go third place is alan coles well done mate well done, well done, well done, well done alan well done alan great, great yeah. image love it beautiful yeah second place is sean well done, Sean. Sean, in number one. Well And the Sean, winner. Do you reckon Sean doesn't have a surname? He's like Kylie or. No, I don't know. Prince. Kylie does. Yeah. yeah. He must Madonna. have a surname. Madonna. Sean. Sting. 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 The winner is Tom Az. 
Well done, well done. Thomas. Well, well, done. well, well done. Fantastic shot, Thomas. Well done. A worthy yeah, sure. winner, if yeah. ever I've Indeed. seen one. So, so, Dave, have you got Thomas's details um, with the um, image? Uh, all I know is his email address, and his, he didn't give me a surname. That's why I just put that. So, Thomas, what you need to do is um, uh, uh, email me with your address to send your amazing prize to, and... £49.99 to handle <laughs> postage and packing. <laughs> and we'll get this out to you by snail mail. <laughs> well done, Tom Thomas. Thomas's email address isn't paulgjohnson at hotmail.com. Do you know what? <laughs> Funnily <laughs> enough. <laughs> snuck one in without telling I'm trying us. to work out whether or not that's my email address. It's not, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or spam. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's malware so he appeared. James R. Burns will be uh, emailing me every night. <laughs> Pictures of his Nothing ball. wrong there. <laughs> Front bomb. Well, well done, no, Thomas. Quick. That was a great yeah, well, really, really, really good really shot, was. Thomas. Well and done. to everybody and as well. All of them. Thank you so all much. Yeah. 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 And as Dave has said, all of the images are available on the website. Dave will mark up the winners, uh, the shortlisted and the commended shots as well. So you can just go on there uh, and enjoy what is a, a, a fantastic collection of images. So you should all yeah. be proud of those. And it was, uh, it was every single one of you. Yeah, really, really good fun judging it as well, and, and good to enjoy those images with the podcast audience, which is fantastic. So, should we do something non-photography based? Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. should we? I'll yeah. Give my mouth shut. Well, there's a topic that I think you put on. Uh, Darren, which was about um, getting old. You see, I always put the topics on, and if it goes, if it goes well in the comments section, then I get the praise for it. And if it goes bad in the comments section, then I get slated for it. Yeah. Is this the so, one about getting old and the effect of it on the environment? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you terribly uninteresting. Uh, well, I think the topic was <laughs> nationality. Do what you want to be. <laughs> The topic was, what can't we do now that we could do in our 20s or in our early years? Must have been so. a frequent one. <laughs> <laughs> go on, oh, who yeah. else can wants to go? <laughs> go on then, Darren. It's your, your topic. You can, you can start off. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's, I mean, being, being sensible, it's just, the, uh, it's just the physical things now. I just kind of look back, you know, when I was in my 20s. I mean, I still do the same job now as I did you know kind of when I was 16 years old and we used to just work I mean I went for a period where I used to do a minimum of eight in the morning till eight at night that was our minimum hours sometimes it was eight in the morning until midnight and we used to do things called ghosters as well where you'll get on the job at eight in the morning and you wouldn't leave till eight o'clock the next day and I used to do kind of six seven days a week regular you know and now you know, I get to like three o'clock in the afternoon and I just want to go home. I just want to have a little kip in the afternoon. I just can't do the physical things like I, like I used to. But I suppose that's it. It's just age kind of catching up with you, really. Mm. And then there's obviously things on the other side as well that I make a lot more noises getting up from a chair than I ever <laughs> used to. You know, I, mean, I think we all kind of make that... Yeah, you know, the old the old man noise when we get out of a chair. Well, I know I certainly do anyway. I was thinking of a different noise. I make a lot of different noises now when I get out of a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as I'm it's not those as Scotch eggs again, I'm, is it? I'm not as tight as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's as Billy Connolly said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and well, that's yeah. something as well. I'm certainly not as um as uh. What am I not? I was forgetful. Do you forget a thing? Like, forget, forget, <laughs> I'm certainly not as nimble. That's what I was going to say. I'm not as flexible. That's for sure, as I as I used to be. But come on, that's enough about me. Come on, James. What's uh, I think on the um, flip that side. If you flip it over a bit, I, I tend to now shave more body parts than what I did in comparison to when I was younger. So rather than just my hair, I now shave my ears. Shave my yeah. eyebrow. I shave my nose. There's three yeah. parts there. Yeah, it's like yeah. it stopped there and it's coming out of here, <laughs> left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your palms. 
Your piles, yeah, they're more frequent. No, your palms. And you hear it? Your hearing, yeah. And you hear it? Yeah. I'm with you on the eyebrows. I must yeah. admit, I don't get particularly hairy ears. But yeah, my eyebrows, they're, they're, just, they're just. I'm getting white ones. Control. White eyebrows. Yeah. Like a little antenna sticking out. Like an antenna. No matter how many times exactly. I pluck it, it comes back a little. Yeah. Has anybody got a strange white pubic hair arriving anytime soon? Just give me a minute, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> funnily enough, no, funnily enough. I'm all right. I'm all right for that. I, I found my first pubic, grey pubic hair Your pubic about, hair. about three months ago. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was in the kebab I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> what are you eating down there for? What did you no, no, was, no, no. The point is, it, the point is, it wasn't mine, James. But the, the joke is, it wasn't mine. See, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kebabs is a good point, actually. Tickle me that. As you get older, I, I think I enjoy kebabs a lot more sober than I used to do when I used to have kebabs drunk. I can really enjoy a kebab at my age, but when you when you when you're younger, you just you only think of it as a end of night way to fill your stomach after a skin full of beer. Yeah, let's be fair, back in the day, you didn't even know you'd had one till the next morning and most of it was <laughs> down your shirt. Exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is where I was going to come on to. Mine, mine is drinking. I used, to, I used to be able to go out and get absolutely rat assed and wake up the next day, go to work, have no problems or anything. I can't drink more than about five, four or five now and I'm, the next morning I'm absolutely done. I'm totally done. Is anyone a lot more more fussy now with their food at our age than you used to be because i i know i am what jay just said about a kebab you know mm -hmm. that was that was a given wasn't it kind of friday night saturday night down the pub finish off with a big like you know greasy kebab now i couldn't eat any of that stuff anymore i'm on even when you've had a few of now because remember when you're younger as guy says you drink a lot more you in, in emissions go out the window so you tend to eat more crap anyway yeah, but I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I got drunk. Twenty years ago, mm. twenty-five years ago, last time I was drunk. I think I was twenty. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sound fussier. I would say now, if I were to go out, say I was going out to do a video or, or to do some photography, and I stopped en route for a, a sausage and egg McMuffin, that's a bit Again. Russian roulette. That's What's a bit that? Russian, a bit Russian roulette for me. That is, that could go one or two ways. So. In what regard? Well, either it will stay in or it'll end up coming out on the next service station. <laughs> oh, it works that quick, does it? Yeah, it does now. It, it, I used to have quite a good constitution, but nowadays it's like, yeah, it, I, I'm definitely playing a dangerous game if I have anything to eat on the way. I, anyway. oh, I, I do spend a lot more time in the toilet, actually. Mm. And always, always better results. Yeah. We've had a new That's toilet a fit. No, seriously, we've had a new toilet fit. We've had a new toilet fit, yeah. And we're talking several flush types. It takes oh, several yeah. flushes. Is it a Japanese type? Pretty good stuff. I have a good digestive system. Solid. I was going to say, you can't put that down to the toilet. That, that's more down to you rather than the new toilet, surely. <laughs> well, I don't know. Perhaps I've just got a poor toilet as well. But yeah. Combination would be. Yeah. No, is it I'm indoors in now then, James? Is yeah, that what yeah. You're saying? He used it back then <laughs> at the garden in Yorkshire. Yeah, I suppose getting older now, it, it it would take you more to shovel it out, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. In the hole. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, when he used to have a cludgy next to the ginnel, he, he just cludgy. used to lob it over the a wall. Cludgy. Has anyone still got a toilet brush, by the way? <laughs> yeah, got loads. Yeah, have you? yeah. yeah. Mrs. Yeah, G's forward. got one. Oh, I haven't. Oh, four, four <laughs> toilet brushes. Oh, because you've got a Japanese toilet, haven't you, James? Yeah, she's on the floor. Does it spray up your your jacks and clean it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you've got, Jay? It must be. What? Yeah. Why haven't oh. you got a toilet brush? I ain't got one now. Because they're all hygienic. So, they're horrible. Just clap, so have you got a Japanese toilet? Yes. Well, what happens then when yes, you get skid it. marks all up the pan? Huh? What's up? What happens when you get all skid marks up the pan? Several flushes. I'm, I'm pretty damn good at directing things as well. Because it's a solid... Tweet. Really? Straight down, yeah. There's no yeah, size. the old. We're really How big is the hole? It must be a fucking massive hole. <laughs> <laughs> Where Where is about the toilet? Going? Not a big ass, but... So, um, Sorry. COP26... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, talking about shit. Exactly. 
COP26, he, he put, a, put a comment on, he gave us a thumbs down, and now he's talking about uh, blob, uh, ploppies. Exactly. <laughs> Jobbies. So even. on, on the subject of things that... Go uh, plop in the name. You could do as a young... Things you did as a youngster that you don't do so much now. For me, one thing that really has become obvious quite recently is that I just don't give a shit what I say. Yeah, if if I've got an opinion, I'll either. share it. I don't no. care what people think. You know, somebody brings a crap meal to my table, I'm not going to go, oh, yeah, that was nice, and just not go back. You know, I'll tell them now. Uh, and and <laughs> not necessarily in an aggressive way, particularly, but I'm much more, or I should say less circumspect. I'm much happier to to share my opinions on stuff and not care what people think of me as a result of it. Whereas when I was younger, it was always a case of, oh, you know, papering over the cracks, keeping things nice and smooth and all this, that and the other. Not anymore. See, mm. I'm the opposite. I'm totally the opposite way round to you, Dave. That's why oh. I'm so pleased that social media wasn't around <laughs> when I was, like, you know, kind of 20 years old. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd be sitting here now, you know, if I... Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that person. That, I'm not the person now that I was then. You know, like, if we go back 30 years ago, I was James Burns. Oof, look at you. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. On, on steroids. Really? <laughs> so, What's uh, happened then? What do you yeah. think has happened then? I just got a bit mellow. We used to get Chilled a bit out. older. Do we smoking? Smoking? Do you think, you know, good smoke? life's yeah. too I, short, I'm, you know? I'm and... ramping up the curmudgeon. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> it, it's funny, though, because it, it's never really shown through on the podcast, Dave. <laughs> Well, I'm spending less time it. on social media to be on the same side. I mean, seriously, if I engaged with some of the stuff that I see on social media with that curmudgeonly head on, I'd have been cancelled some time ago. Yeah. I, I do. Tr I just avoid it because I know, I, you know, all those microaggressions will trigger me. We just share. Um, we just share it amongst the group, don't we? Keep it personal. Yeah. 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 Who likes an afternoon nap now? Now you've got a bit older. Can't do it. Hundred percent. Well, I know you oh, do, but yeah. I love an. You see, I'm sleepless. Think, in I, fact. I, I'm sleepless. Sorry. Go. I I'm I was born, I reckon, to have two sleeps a day. <laughs> see, even if I go to bed, if I if I went to bed late tonight, say like nine o'clock, but if I went, to, <laughs> <You're really> <laughs> no, if I went, <laughs> if I went to bed at, at say ten or eleven tonight, I would still be up at four o'clock tomorrow morning. Without a shadow of a doubt, because it's the way my body clock is. So I'm the I'm, same as I'm, you. I'm born to have a nap in the afternoon. I, what I do is I wake up about five in the morning, do about three or four hours work, go to sleep for a couple of hours, yeah. and then get up, and then, wow. and, then I'm, and then I'm working in clinic until nine in the evening. So. You're a cat. Yeah, yeah. I don't Perfect. know. I don't know. It's just it takes after my mum. I think it's just. Uh, yeah. But you know, if 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 I got up at four o'clock in the morning and, and then finish work at ten o'clock the next night, work that out. It's a, a lot of hours, so mm. I need some form of break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm similar to you guys, except I don't get up early. We know that. So I get, yeah, I get, that. I get mm. up, say it's the weekend. If it's the weekend, I'll get up about half nine, and I'll still have a nap at about three. And it's lovely. But if you say, if you, I don't know about you guys, but if you say, <laughs> right, three o'clock, up to bed, up to bed for a couple of hours, I'd lay in bed going, oh, I can't sleep. Oh, I can't sleep. Oh, I need to look oh, at my phone. Yeah. But I just sit on the sofa, I'm gone. Yeah. Put, put me yeah. in front, even if I want to watch what's on the telly, I'm like, no, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just listen to it for a minute. I'll just shut my eyes and listen to what, gone, totally gone. Well, I've got a question for you then. What is it, scenario? It, it's, it's a Saturday night, all right? You've had a Did few beers, you've got, you've got nothing going on on the Sunday. Uh, what's the latest you could, if you think, right, I'm just going to wake up whenever I wake up on the Sunday. What is the latest that you could wake up on a Sunday? I have seven, eight for me. I have seven, eight. That's when your body clock would kick in and say, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I'm usually yeah. awake my abs, seven, half, seven. I can't lay, I can't, I can't lay in bed. But five. I can't go to bed early as well. Five, it's it's yeah. very five. rare I go to bed before half, 11, midnight during the week. <gasps> Is it really? Yeah, I don't. I don't sleep. You go to bed early, don't you, Darren? Yeah. What because time do you I, go to bed? Well, that, see, that's the thing. Because of my, I, I, I really try 
I really try to lay in in the morning. And I just, I mean, a lay in for me, without exaggeration, a lay in for me will probably be about half past five in the yeah. morning. Yeah. That is a real lay in. I'm always up between four and five every day. Best part of the day, though, to be honest. It Tasty. really is. I love mornings. Do you know what? I love I to get up on a Sunday change. morning or whatever day and do some editing at four in the morning, something like that. I've done that a few times. Exactly I just the love same. that. Get yep. the AirPods Jamie's on. Jamie's going to love it this week. Huh? <laughs> what, four in the morning? Yeah, so yeah, I'll Jamie's be having a nightmare at four week. in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to say, Paul, Darren goes to bed so early that all his section is pre-recorded. He did this this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's actually asleep right now. Yeah, that's why he's making no sense. <laughs> No, I really like her, Martina Cole, the author. And I was listening to an interview with her and she does all of her writing of a night. So she will sit down at about 11 o'clock at night with um, uh, a couple of glasses of whiskey and then she will write all the way through the night until like five or six o'clock the following morning. They go to bed. Yeah. That's it. And she'll, she'll sleep during what the day. What did she write again? What's that? With Tom oh, Hardy in it. What, what, she, what was yeah, it? Yeah, the... the the take, take the no, it, yeah. run, run away. Oh, she's done brilliant books. I love her as an author. The, the sleep, the then I'm still awake. Yeah. The what the, am I doing? The cup, I need nap. another whiskey. Yeah, the nap. Yeah. The no, theme. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I, I, I would lay in, absolutely. I'd lay in to half nine, ten o'clock, if that was me. Would I, you? I would absolutely love a lay in. But the thing is, I also wouldn't have an afternoon nap, though, because that, for me, would be wasting time during the day. And I, I, once you're awake, I want to stay awake. I don't want to waste waste the day of sleeping once I'm awake. Mm. Because, you know, the closer you get to death, then, you know, the, the more time you want to appreciate <laughs> life, Christ. really. So mm -hmm. <laughs> don't yeah, waste your time I, I've sleeping. Already had, I've Ooh. already had six oh. hours awake before you get up, though, Joe. Yeah. Mm. And then I'll only have an hour in the afternoon. But I just feel refreshed after that hour. You know, I love going up to bed at about, say, two o'clock in the afternoon, between two and three. <gasps> love it. The reckon it takes 20 minutes, Darren. If you have 20 minutes kip, it refreshes you completely. Yeah. And if you go over oh, uh, 20 minutes to an hour, and then if you go over an hour, you feel more tired when you wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. deep sleep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I always set to, my yeah, alarm for an hour. Yeah. Gary, wake up. Hmm? Oh, I'm just like, trying to get me 20 minutes you are just getting bored. But going back to the old age things, Darren, and, and linking it to sleep, do you not find you're up through the night to the toilet more as you get older? Yeah, definitely. The other night it was four times, and I just kept thinking, where is all this coming from? Get your prostate checked. This is crazy. Exactly. Have you checked it lately, Darren? Check, Darren? Well, yeah. it, might, it might have something to do with... You're going to check now. <laughs> What's wrong, yeah? Kinds of... That's what I'm thinking. You say you drink pint cans, but you said you've not been drunk for 20 years. How much can you drink, Darren, before oh, yeah, you Yeah, but this drunk? is... No, no. I, these are weak, aren't they? These are... What are these? I can't... Last one. 3.8%. 3 3 yeah. Yeah, these are very weak. So the, the maximum I'll have is about four of those. Yeah. Of, yeah. of a weekend, you know, in one night. I, I don't drink during the week now. No. So don't drink on a school night. My wife thinks that I have a problem with going needing to go to school in the night. Because every I get I have night terrors, and if oh, pretty much those. every night I'll wake up, and I'll have to get out of bed and think that either the walls are falling in or there's something going on, and she'll go, "What are you doing up there?" And I go, "I'm just going to the loo," because it's just a cover because I'm too embarrassed to tell her oh, that I think okay. there's a monster in the room or something stupid. Oh, you're <laughs> Gary. Bless you. Well, is, is the Parkinson's in your family? Um, in my family, Gary. Yeah. Is that Not what? that I know of. No, no. Why is that? No, it's just night terrors can sometimes be uh, part of that. But oh, sounds like you're absolutely fine. <laughs> oh, <what? Okay>. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It's the clinician, Eddie. You'll be fine, don't worry. Yeah. 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 So we've had prostate problems, yeah. Parkinson's. All oh, right. And, yeah. well, and Jamie wants to stay awake because he, cause he's going like to die. You want to listen to Billy Connolly's new autobiography. He actually he actually uh, uh, narrates it on Audible. And it's just like us talking here. Yeah. <laughs> How much you can drink. Parkinson's disease. Uh, going to the toilet six times in the night. Oh, <laughs> uh, I will listen to that. <laughs> Masturbating with gloves on. James R. Bird. <laughs> just left up. Overrated. Harry Han. You do yeah. a stranger. Do you do a stranger where you sit on your hand, James? Mm. 
Get so, yeah, that's, 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 that's another Billy Connolly yeah. one. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck editing this, Jay. That's yeah. well, I just, that. I just hope that you folks that were critical about us being too serious last week have uh, realised that we're we're trying to be a little bit less critical this week. So. Yeah. Yeah, next week, the economy. <laughs> <laughs> and Boris Johnson. Yeah. Overpopulation. Yeah. Anti-vaxxers. Can we do anti-vaxxers? Yeah. Anti-war. Oh, I can yeah. tell you something about anti-vaxxers. Yorkshire Cricket Club. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, what a bollocks that's about. Yeah, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, well, I think I'll we're... tell you what we should do. Sorry, oh, Joe. No. I just think... What we should do is perhaps people that are watching this should actually choose a couple of topics for us perfect and, and perhaps we can actually pick out some uh, some topics in the comment section yeah to see if anything there tickles yeah, we their do, fancy we do try that every now and again and if it bombs then we'll we blame, can blame you. them see yeah. mm-hmm. we'll blame you darren <laughs> always blame me anyway so that's what i think let's pass the buck yeah and, and if anybody wants to put in the comments who they want to host and edit next week, then do that, as long as it's not me. And no, I'll just ignore you. The, the one with the most uh, votes gets the, uh, gets the job. <laughs> job done. The Paul just said Lynn Lux and Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had to put that in. I love you, Lynn. <laughs> Nothing to do with you, love. Yeah. <laughs> right. Read the, read the comments, Lynn. <laughs> Are we ready to call it yeah. a night, chaps? I think yeah. that's been a really are, good yeah. podcast. And, yeah. That I think we've just just, we've... just before you finish. Thank you very much, guys, for asking me what, what, what I was uh, getting too uh, old for because you left me out. Oh, what are you getting too old for, mate? Come on, you should have uh, been speaking up. <laughs> I am not <laughs> speaking up now. <laughs> that's it. Being noticed and speaking you're... up. They're the yeah. two. <laughs> finish it on there. <laughs> Yeah, you missed your you chance. What are you getting on? No, that's no, it. No, no, that's no, it. no. Okay. Suffering okay. falls gladly, and that'll be it. <laughs> well, you are on here, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> now it's very much uh, uh, what Dave will say. Don't suffer falls gladly anymore. No. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. right well, go on, on that note. Can I? Can I'm I? Now. Can I do the outro now? Am I allowed to? Do right, the outro. Thank you. Try. Come on, wrap it up. Are you going to make it now? I'm Jamie, is that Jamie, right? Jamie, are you on? You no. on? Yeah, you're on now. Yeah, you're on now. Yeah, you're on I'm on now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on. on. No, James is on I'm now. On. No, I'm on. No, you're on, on now. No. No. Gary? Shall we explain the viewers? You're on, Jay, what? quick. Go, yeah. Jay, quick. You're, oh, you're not anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm, no, Gary? don't explain the viewers, because... Are you on, Gary? Be on, and I want to be on. I'm not on now. Well, you explain the viewers. Listen. You was on, though, Gal. Let me on. Jay, you're I'm, on, go. Am I, am I on now? Go, 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 go. I'm, go. I'm, I'm not no, anymore, you're too late. Tell saying, you're going to talk over me. It's too late. We won't. We won't. We won't. You, Honestly, you won't. we won't. Right. Jay, Jamie, we won't. I'm, yeah. Thank you. Am I on? Right. Yeah, you're on now. You're on. <laughs> am I on now? Right. <laughs> no, okay. you're not on now. No, you're not on now. I'm going to just talk my way through it and not let you talk. Right. Thank you, guys, for watching and tuning in this week. It's been a blast, as always. Now... Gary normally says, you know, these things are available on the uh, on the podcast through various means. Uh, if they end up there, then it will be a, a surprise because I've got a clue how to do that. But hopefully it will. So tune in to there. And, you know, next week, as I say, we will have a, uh, a different host. Um, and whether it will be Gary coming back in the chair or whether it will be another um, willing volunteer from the pod, we'll wait and see. And, and as I say, I do apologise in advance if this edit is a load of crap. But hopefully you'll still enjoy it anyway. On that note, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you all next week. See you guys. Bye-bye.